Hello and welcome to the Scroll Saw Workshop. I'm Steve Good, and uh, in tonight's video, I want to talk about uh, uh, making patterns a little easier to create uh, in CorelDRAW. Uh, many of you have emailed me telling me that you have went out and purchased CorelDRAW just to make these scroll saw patterns. So I thought I would uh, spend a little more time tonight talking about uh, different techniques. And uh, what I want to do tonight is talk about using uh, clip art that you actually have uh, created yourself and uh, keep on your hard drive to uh, make putting together patterns uh, much easier when you get to that point. So what I'm going to do today is use a little clip art and uh, show you how we might uh, make the beginnings of a picture frame or some other type of pattern uh, uh, a little easier. One of the things you can do in CorelDRAW is you can have more than one document open at the same time. So in this case, I've got a blank uh, piece of paper opened up here, and I'm going to go up to my open icon, and I'm going to open up another file on my hard drive named Clips. Now this just happens to be a, uh, uh, a file that is a scan from my uh, scanner of a page out of a clip art book. Now this particular clip art book is our royalty free clip art and uh, according to the uh, rules of the book you're allowed to use up to 10 pieces of this clip art uh, in a project uh, legally without uh, having to get written permission from these people so uh, you want to look for that type of royalty free clip art if you're going to try to sell your patterns now if you're just making them to give away to a friend or to make for yourself it's not that big an issue but in this case you would want to you know follow the rules of the book so anyway, what I did is I scanned this in on my scanner and imported the scan into CorelDRAW. And I just manually went through these different pieces of clip art on this page and I traced them manually like we've done in some of the earlier videos here on the, the workshop. And in this case, you can see this small piece of clip art right here is was traced by me into this. And I'll go through and pick out the pieces in this book that I like. And I'll sit down when I don't have anything else to do and just, you know, manually trace these uh, pieces and save them to a file. And that way when I get ready to make a pattern, I have all these little pieces that I can use to help me create that pattern. So what I'm going to do now is if I go up here to the window menu item, I can jump back and forth between the two pages that I have open. The bottom one here is this clip art page and the number one screen is the actual blank screen. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back to the blank screen and get started on a pattern. In this case, I'm going to build a small picture frame or at least get started on one. So I'm going to select my rectangle tool. I'm going to go over here and put a rectangle on the screen and you can type in whatever dimensions you want for this particular picture frame. But for this example, we'll just put this one up here. Then I'm going to go over to the interactive contour tool and it's the second one in the flyout right here. And we've done this before on the workshop too, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a contour of this square, of this size. Again, I'm going to go up to the break contour group apart from the arrange menu. And then with my pick tool, I'm going to go up to the front minus or back minus front. And what that allowed me to do was create this outline of this uh, rectangle, which will be the picture frame we're going to create. Now that I have the beginnings of this frame created, we want some decorative fretwork maybe around the outside of it. So what I can do now is go back to the window menu item, go down to my clips page that I have open in the background, and I can select one of these pieces of clip art. And in this case, I'm going to click on this one right here, this little flower, and I'm going to go up to edit, copy, or I could use the shortcut control C, and I'm going to go back to the window and back to the blank page where we have our picture frame and then I can either do edit paste or control V as a shortcut and that will paste that piece of clip art onto this page. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my frame and I'm going to hit the P key to center that and I'm going to go ahead and draw out a guideline and the guidelines are something I've talked about in another video also so you might want to look that video up to see how these work and with the guideline selected I'm going to hit P so now I've dissected this picture frame right down the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flower and I'm going to put it up here at the top of the frame and I'm going to size it to where it's close to half of the size of the screen or the frame and I'm just going to use the guideline here to give me a, a, a way of making sure I've got this flower just on the left hand side of the frame. Now what I'm going to do is with this piece of clip art selected I'm going to go over to my transformations docker 
what you can open up from your uh, tools, uh, Docker, and then uh, transformation. And we've talked about this before also, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this either. I can go up now to my scale and mirror command, and with that scale and mirror item or icon selected, um, it gives me the chance to mirror this image. So in other words, I want to make an exact copy of this only mirrored uh, 180 degrees from the other one. So with the, this selected and leave the scale at 100% so we don't change the size, and with the mirror horizontally selected, I can click down here on apply to duplicate, and now I've created an exact copy of that flower. And now what I'm going to do is use my arrow keys to take that copy and move it to the other side. Okay, so now we have our two mirrored uh, flowers at the top of this picture frame. I can go up to my select tool, lasso all these items on the screen, and again go back up to our weld tool that we've talked about before, click weld, and now you can see I've, I've taken those flowers and I've welded them into the picture frame. Now you can go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, let me go ahead and hit the paste key to get the flower back on here. Now let's say we wanted to have the exact opposite of that on the top. With the flower selected, instead of doing the mirror horizontally, we could do the mirror vertically icon selected, hit apply instead of applying duplicate, and we've got the exact opposite now at the bottom of the picture frame. With that selected, we could go back up to the mirror horizontally, apply to duplicate, We've got the exact opposite now. We can move it over with our arrow keys, go through the same process of, of selecting everything, click on the weld icon, and there we have the beginnings of a pretty nice uh, picture frame that we could cut out on our scroll saw. And you could obviously continue to do the same treatment along the sides or just whatever you wanted to do. So what this does is it gives you the ability to create scroll saw patterns much quicker uh, than you might be able to do just uh, starting from scratch. So get yourself some clip art, find some pictures off the web that you feel like you're allowed to use, and uh, sit down one night and trace a bunch of them out and uh, save them to your hard drive and then when you get ready to uh, create a pattern you've got all this clip art sitting around waiting for you and it makes the whole creative process quite a bit easier uh, so anyway I just wanted to throw that little video together tonight I've had a few questions about how I do that and uh, that's the simplest way I know to uh, get a pattern started hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for stopping by please visit my blog at www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com uh, where you can find free patterns, video tutorials, and other things related to the scroll saw. Everybody have a good night, and we'll see you in the next video.